Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Trek, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of the original series, The Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, or Enterprise. Today, I'm looking at the Gamesters of Triskelion, from the original series, second season. Or as I like to call it, that time Star Trek was super extra iconic. This episode was requested by Bay Area Guess the Sound. I'm super excited for this one, so let's get going. We begin the episode with a really orange planet, and Chekhov and Ahura get to go on a field trip with Kirk, leaving Spock in charge. They go to Energize when... And Kirk thinks it's a transporter malfunction, while Scotty reports it to Spock, who's a bit sassy. The away team find themselves surrounded, nice teeth, and their phasers don't work. And I am. Oh sure, Kirk, leave Chekhov with a massive guy and Ahura with two opponents, very brave. So no wonder he gets the upper hand, and this lady runs in to donk him, and into the credits we go. Oh, hello there! This is Galt, and he gives a shout out to all three crew members for their great spirit, and says they'll do just fine here. They're chained up and called thralls. Jeez, this guy doesn't blink! And he says they're off to training, which gives us a great example of Shatner's weird line delivery. We're not going anywhere until we have some information. Who are you? What is this place? Scotty reports to Spock that the transporters are working fine, and there's no explanation as to where they've gone. So Spock says to hope for the best. Eyebrow raise. Spock sass. The captives are shown to their quarters and they make a break for it, but Professor X there chokes them out with their new necklaces. And Galt says there's no way to escape, so get in your cages. Spock concludes they're not in the solar system, and McCoy asks if anyone could survive being trapped in a transporter beam. And yes, yes they could, because Scotty would do that very thing for 75 years in the Next Generation episode Relics. This guy Lars goes to see Uhura and does God knows what to her. What's happening to Lieutenant Uhura? <laughs> okay, Kirk and grumpy green hair wants Kirk to eat. This rando lady discovers something useful, then takes the helm, so all the extra pay for you today, while Chekhov gets a visit from his drill thrall, accompanied by sexy music. It is a nice name, Chiku. <laughs> Tamoon likes the look of him, maybe because his uniform matches her face, while Kirk asks Shana about the situation, and she says his collar will get a colour when he's bought. And I'm sorry, but as someone with a big nose, I am obsessed with how tiny this lady's is. Kirk immediately flirts with her because of course he does, and finds out she was born here before a red light goes off and she says it's time for exercise. They all go to play Jewel, but this poor dude apparently upset Galt, so now he's a target, but Uhura refuses to attack him, so she's about to be punished when Kirk Kirk steps in, so he's whipped around by Klug. When Kirk kicks him, Galt tells him to go on break, where Shana gives him a tip about Klug having shitty eyesight on the left side. So Kirk immediately ignores that advice, manages to get his bonds to the front, and chokes him out. Having witnessed this, the unseen providers start making bids until Provider 1 wins, and now Kirk is the red team. Oh, they all are. Kirk and Shana go for a jog, but Kirk needs a rest, and asks about the providers. But she's very vague about them. Then he's back to flirting again, and he teaches her about love. But she's not impressed, and tries to walk away, but Kirk gets her to talk about the providers a little, and she is punished. Stop it! You're killing her! He begs for them to stop, but they say no. However, Shana is thankful he tried, and they kiss. Captain. Shit, that made me jump. Galt tells Kirk to go to his room, while Scotty and McCoy think Spock is nuts for expanding the search area so wide, but he has some words for the two naughty boys. Gentlemen, I am in command of this vessel, and we shall continue on our present course, unless it is your intention to declare a mutiny. Shana isn't happy with Kirk and wants him to have a different person attending him, but he kisses her again and then punches her out, escaping a cell and letting the others free. They make it to the arena where Galt shows up and punishes them, while the Enterprise rocks up to the planet and Spock and McCoy plan to beam down, but the ship is set to disco mode and the providers tell them off. Kirk sasses the providers so they transport him to meet them, and they're just brains in a jar. Tee hee, so wiggly. He sasses them some more so they say they'll kill them all. And you've called yourself superior. You're murderers! <laughs> 
and he explains that the humans are massive gamblers and bets that they will win a match against the thralls. And if they do, the providers have to let everyone go. The providers are interested, but want Kirk to fly solo and fight three thralls at once, which he has no choice but to agree to. The rules are explained. Kirk has to kill a thrall for them to be beaten. If they're wounded, they get replaced. The thralls must not step on the yellow or they lose a weapon, and Kirk will lose a weapon if he steps on the blue, which is immediately ignored. In fact, it happens a bunch more times during the fight, so these brains in a jar can't referee for shit. Kirk kills Klug and picks up the tiniest knife, which Lars grabs, but a little ninja move causes the Andorian to accidentally kill him. Wait, how did he die all the way over there? Kirk knocks the Andorian out so he's replaced by Shana, and his body disappears too. And after a short skirmish, Kirk has Shana in a kill position, so she surrenders. And that's apparently enough for Kirk to win the match. They can now remove their collars, which Kirk does dramatically, and he kisses Shana without punching her this time, and they're beamed away. Okay, so this has got to be the most iconic episode of Star Trek ever, right? I mean, the original series has some amazing episodes like Balance of Terror and the Doomsday Machine, but as far as cementing its place in the pop culture zeitgeist, this has got to take the top spot. It has all the what are now sci-fi cliches. Brains in a jar, fighting to the death in an arena, complete with iconic music, collars to control behavior, learning about an opponent's weak spot from a trainer, and teaching alien women how to love. And the Simpsons and Futurama are all over this. Kirk is on fire with his overdramatic line deliveries, and visually the whole thing looks great in a cheap sort of way, but I love it. I wish Chekhov and Tamoon had more screen time together, and he and Ahura were more involved with the games. But I love that Spock searched for them on a hunch, and I appreciate the touch of Galt's collar being three different colours, indicating he's owned by all three providers. Seriously, go watch this one for yourself, just to see how iconic it is, and how much it is impacted pop culture. So there you have it. That was The Gamesters of Triskelion. If there's an episode of Star Trek you'd like me to cover, pop it down in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot, or consider subscribing if you want to be assimilated into my channel. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon, and live long and prosper!